For more on all this, Ryan Patel, Global Business Executive, Senior Fellow at the Drucker School of Management, Claremont Graduate University. Good to see you. Welcome back. Um, this jobs report, you know, we had over 200,000 jobs created. There's a lot of talk that, you know, we might see a weakening in, in the economy. We know that there are a lot of jobs available. We know there's still a shortage of workers. This is going to be a problem for the Fed because they're trying to slow things down. This job report seems to be hot. Yeah, they, I mean, in essence, by increasing inflation, they wanted the unemployment to actually, you know, go up a percent. I think it was a million jobs were going to be lost. But when you have this jobs report that, you know, I think it was 260, 260,000 going up. And then we're also starting to see some cuts as well. It kind of, it kind of doesn't go board well for what the Fed was trying to do um, on that perspective. But yeah, I mean, I think for the, you know, for the Biden administration, they heard today, that was something that they said that the economy is still strong and, you know, it doesn't show the recession because if you want to be a recession, it should be going the other way. Now, in fairness, these jobs reports have been heavily criticized as, number one, backwards looking. So what the Fed does today, we're not going to see an impact for many, many months. We did have the news, of course, of the Twitter layoffs, which I'm sure you followed. But I don't want to say dwell on just Twitter, but overall, we are seeing more and more signs that companies, especially tech companies, have been laying off workers, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, one hundred percent. And but I think what you also are seeing that some of the layoffs started to fill in the summer. So many of these tech companies or many companies that were laying off, they weren't doing it all in one, in one, in one go. And so you're starting to see a little bit in the summer. You start to see another round, and part of that then leads into what's the uncertainty. Companies were trying to plan what their revenue looks like instead of going through now. Elon Musk and and, and Twitter is a different situation of Elon walking into Twitter going. It pretty much kind of changing. He started from the reset button. So it gives him what he, he wants is kind of a reset, gets his people in there, also helps, you know, the burning of the revenue and then him trying to create revenue at the same time. So, like I said, the reports were saying almost what 3,000 jobs could be cut. You know, that's a little bit different from what the rest of the tech industry was doing, but obviously this was something that well, Elon I mean, had his eyes set. That's kind of a silly question, company. but if you and I worked for Elon, if, if we worked there and here comes Elon, everybody's fired, you're fired, you're fired, you check your email, I mean, nobody, who would want to work in that environment? I mean, you, you might want to even quit before you even get fired because it doesn't seem like a very fun environment to work in. If every day you come to work, you're worried about being fired. Yes, and you know, I'm not defending Elon on this, but you know, if I was a Twitter employee, I'm not happy right now. I knew a handful of them who got cut in the layoff. You know, they, they really feel proud of what they built. But now the flip side of that is look at Tesla. People like enjoy working at Tesla. People people still buy Tesla, still even though Elon is a part of that company. So, you know, Elon has on you know, you have to give him credit. He has a, a strong following. He's got a cult like following for people wanting to work from him. Is it gonna be the same culture as Twitter? No, it's going to be a different culture, and I think you're right. Those who don't want to fit that culture is going to have to look elsewhere, and I think that is what we're going to see. For Elon to be successful, he's got to mirror what he did at Tesla and build that, and I think he's going to try. I mean, to me, it makes the most sense for him to try to turn this around and right. why he made that investment. Right. Well, he mean, believes he can in, make in, money with Twitter fairness, and grow it. He, he didn't lay off tens of thousands of people at Tesla, right? I mean, I know there were some layoffs, but not on this type of scale. Let me move to the rest of the tech uh, workers because... There is a silver lining to all this, that if you're going to get laid off or you're, you're going to change jobs, this is probably as good as time as any because there are still a lot of jobs available per the report, right? Yeah, no, you know, I also think going into next year, first quarter, second quarter, you know, if all goes well and we're starting to see the economy soften a little bit, the Fed is already saying the next meeting 50 basis points and after that 25 basis points, so they're projecting things get better. Still, we're going to see more other kinds of job opportunities. These jobs that were lost could potentially come back in different forms. So obviously, this, for example, if Twitter starts making a whole bunch of revenue, you don't think, I mean, I would expect Elon to start hiring again. And I think many of the other companies that did have this soft layoffs, if revenues start to increase and pick up, they're going to go back to the workforce and hire. And so, you know, that, again, maybe I'm being too hopeful, but that's kind of what you can get to see, not just the jobs are right. occurring now, but there could be oh. better potential and other opportunities. Good to be optimistic. I mean, you're at the Claremont Graduate University, and if I was your student, or maybe Eric or Ron here, anybody, we're all your students, what should we study 
so we can get a good job in the year 2023. I'll tell you this, and I, I tell this to my students, know the whole business from ins and out. Just don't be an expert in one thing, be an expert in many things from different departments, from marketing, supply chain, cybersecurity, technology, how to build people, learn about different cultures. I can keep going on, Phil, but part of my whole point is understand the whole system, understand how we are interconnected and how you actually build and grow organizations from a people perspective. I mean, that's important. It's, it's being human, having the empathy and also understanding the model and understanding finances. So, so these I know I gave you a whole bunch there, Phil, but <laughs> I, I know you got it. We love getting advice from you. So these people who are getting laid off or looking to change jobs, what is the first step they do after they decide that they have to move on to the next thing? Is it fixing their LinkedIn? Is it calling their friends? Is it talking to you? Is it calling a uh, university? I mean, there must be a, a playbook here to help these people in the economy. One, there's nothing wrong with you. You did a great job. Take the great things that you did. There's nothing wrong with you. Understand that too. Yes, get to LinkedIn, update your resume, put a post out there. If you want to tag me, tag me too. Call me and say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Anyone in my network can help. This is how this is how it starts. That that DM, that personal relationship. This is the time not to be afraid. Lessons I wish I would have followed myself. This is the time to let the world know that hey, I'm willing. I want help and I want a great job. And I think that's a great way to start. All right, um, Ryan. I'm going to ask our producer Hector to give out your your cell phone to everybody. And uh, <laughs> so just be careful. Thank you very you much. Tag you on the um, socials and make sure Hector, you give Phil's cell phone. And I'm all good. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Thank you very much on your analysis on the economy going forward.